Okay, team, let's take a look at our first print awareness question. Uh, this is from the foundation's reading test, the 190. Sorry, not the 190, the 90. This is a test that's been around for a while, but it's still got some good questions. I want you just to practice your, your reading it in one minute. These aren't going to be particularly hard questions. So I just want you to practice from here to here. Read it in, in a minute if you can. Pause me now and read. Go. Unpause. You practice your reading. Every time we have a question and I write down the number, that is you training, right? You are, you are, you are putting on your headband <laughs> and you are putting tie in your shoes and you are, you are trying to build that pace and you may need to practice and train that skill. Now, this is an easier question than some of the ones that we're going to do, but every question you're getting a little faster. Okay getting a little bit more exposure to the vocab. So every time you see that one minute, two minute, three minute, that's your opportunity to pause me and practice working that skill of reading, okay? And now you've read it. What's the first thing I'm gonna circle? I'm probably gonna circle the grade because that's like an instant clue. I can see that word kindergarten within the first two words. And right away, my brain says what? I'm probably thinking, hmm, kindergarten? This could either be a sound thing or, I mean, it could be other things or a print thing. We're, we're going to have to read it over to determine which one it is, or maybe it's something else. But those are my first two go-tos in the first two seconds, first, the second word of reading this. It says here, a kindergarten teacher hangs, okay, this is what the teacher is doing. They're hanging labels of key objects in the classroom. Uh, so they're hanging labels of key everyday words, everyday objects the clock, desk, crayon, right? Everyday objects get a, a globe, map, door, everything, mat, everything gets um, a, a label. They're, they put uh, posters up that include words and captions and always uh, has a big book on display. Look at these things here. Labels, uh, posters, words, captions, big book. I don't know about you. But I think these are really leaning towards, these are all leaning towards print. Would you agree? These are all print details. And um, when I see this, I see, let me clear it off a little bit. I see a very print enriched environment. Can you recognize that? Remember from the first session, we talked about our friend. I'm going to go back to our friend here. My friend, John. Everyone has a friend, a good friend. You sometimes meet them for coffee and you they're gonna yeah, that's coffee. So you're gonna meet them for coffee, right? And and wherever you're meeting them, uh, it is filled with uh, people that are not your friend. They're not necessarily bad people. They're just they're just not the people that you came to uh, sit down and have lunch with, right? So so when we when we spot our friend, we wanna in these questions, we wanna spot them right away, right? Well, in this question here. Hopefully you've seen right away with the labels and the posters and the words and the captions and the big book that this is definitely, definitely a print thing. Yes? Do you agree? When, when we think about a print rich environment, because well, all the questions will be based in print rich environments and print rich activities. I want you to think about your classroom if you're, if you're an early childhood educator. Maybe you're teaching, you know, three to four year olds or four to five year olds or kindergarten, five to six or first and second grade. Your classroom is a print enriched environment. It is loaded with print. Like so what is the teacher doing? What are they trying to promote in this print enriched environment? Well, uh, I don't think it is uh, the recognition that words are composed of sounds. That was separate sounds. That's a phonemic awareness activity. And that's not what we're doing with all this print. And it's not really high frequency sight words. We're going to talk about that word in a little bit, but, but let's just do a little preview real quick. High frequency sight words are words that we want students to automatically recognize. We could think of these as like, like popcorn words. You've ever heard of that phrase, popcorn word? But these are words that we want them to rapidly recognize. Now, there, there are two types. Some of these are, uh, some of these are, well, I could write down a couple real quick. The of some in on um, 
that, right? These are these are very high frequency words that a student is going to see is is going to uh, uh, is they're going to see this throughout their reading. So if they can just memorize the of some in is on that, they're going to be hitting a lot of the words that they see in a beginner text. Is that right? So these are some of the most basic high frequency words. There's other words here. There's our CVC words, cat. Uh, or 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 ship. This that's not CBC, but it's uh, something you know, uh, another type of very decodable word. These are all very decodable words. The ones that I have here. Let's do uh, street. These are everyday words. <clears throat> so high frequency words are these everyday words we want students to rapidly recognize. We can think of them as sometimes uh, high frequency words that sometimes are partially irregular, like some of these here where some of these high frequency words are regular, meaning you can decode. We're not dealing with that in this question. So we don't need to uh, deal, th that's not gonna be the answer. That's not the friend that we're looking for, right? We're looking for our friend, John, who's all into print, right? We're not looking for high frequency words. So that's out. How about automaticity and word recognition? Automaticity is rapid recognition of words, and it's usually associated with fluency. That's not the, these are not the droids. This is not the friend we're looking for. What does all this indicate? Captions, words, big book, poster, labels. It's building an awareness that print, that, that print carries meaning and print awareness. Who got that? Now, if you spot that, right? All this stuff and this environment, this is a print enriched environment that's fostering print awareness. You're going to be able to get these questions much faster, right? Okay, this is from this test. It's a good test to review, even though it's been around a while. Um, you have some of this vocab in it, print awareness, high frequency sight words, automaticity, phone phonemic awareness. I don't know if we mentioned it, but, but you know that from the last chapter. You get to, yeah, we did mention it. It was it was uh, referenced in this one right here. Phonemic awareness was referenced there. You get to go back and review some of this vocab in this question. So a good one to review, okay? Uh, <clears throat> because it's gonna give you those ideas and the scenarios are gonna be a little simpler to understand. They're not gonna be as wordy. So you're gonna be able to get the mini scenario and the answer a little bit more, a little faster. Um, and that's good practice, okay? Because the newer exams are going to take the same scenario and, and make it much longer. But but the thing is, with those newer, wordier questions, right, you're still going to be like, within, you know, the first minute, you're going to, the first minute, you're going to try and ID this as your friend. So whether it's a big scenario or a short scenario, your job is to be like, oh, I know you. You're a print enriched, uh, print awareness question, right? So these are good. Uh, this test is a good one to practice, to get some practice with some of those basic scenarios and core concepts. Okay, so take a look at this test if you can. Let's go to our next question involving uh, print awareness.